Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet. Let us continue with the chapter Diversity in Living Organisms. Well, this is the 13th session, 13th theory session of this chapter. And in the earlier session, uh, we were discussing about the subclassification of Kingdom Planty. Right? And uh, we are going to continue with that only. I will just give you a brief reminder about the Kingdom Planty, whatever we have discussed. And then we are going to continue further. See, the plants are classified on the basis of various features. And what are those features? Number one, the differentiation of body parts, development of vascular system, then their seed pairing capacity, and how these seeds are present. According to that part, that uh, uh, feature, these plants are further subclassified. Fine. So, uh, these plants are subdivided into two sub-kingdoms and these sub-kingdoms are the cryptogams and the phenarogams. Fine. Uh, crypto means hidden and gams is related to gammas or the gametes. Right. So, in this particular group, the reproductive parts are hidden. Right. They are not present in an open condition or in the exposed condition. And also, they are seedless plants. That means they are not able to produce the seeds as well as they are non-flowering plants. And in this category, which all plants are coming or which divisions are coming here? They are Thallophyta, Bryophyta and Teridophyta. In the earlier session, we have already discussed about these three categories. Now, the next group is Phenarogams and here the Phenaro means visible. Uh, so, in this case, the reproductive parts are visible, right? And uh, of course, they are able to produce the seeds and these are having the flowers. They are the flowering plants. Fine. Now, uh, these particular plants, they are subclassified. Uh, into gymnosperms and angiosperms. Remember, these gymnosperms and angiosperms are the, um, they are the divisions, right? Further, uh, see, there is one mistake in this chart. I'm very sorry for that. Angiosperms are further subclassified into monocots and dicots, right? Uh, and here it has been just mentioned in a wrong way. Uh, we can just make a correction here. See, uh, angiosperms, they are two types, dicot and the monocot. So, it is like this. Fine. Well, uh, gymnosperms. Gymno means naked. Right? Sperms means seed. So, here these seeds are present as a naked structure. Right? It is exposed. Uh, besides this, angiosperms, angio means a cover or a case. So, seeds are enclosed inside a structure or a cover that is have it is having a seed coat. Oh, I'm sorry, it is enclosed inside the fruit. So, this is how these are further subclassified, right? So, now let me explain about these phenerogams. So, uh, these uh, phenerogams, uh, the, as I already said what it means basically, uh, this sub-kingdom, includes those plants that bear external flowers and they are able to produce the seeds. So, the seed bearing capacity, uh, it is actually the particular uh, feature which places any particular plant in this particular sub-kingdom. That means only those organisms that, uh, that have the seed bearing capacity, they come under the phenarogams. Fine. And well, this uh, presence of this external flowers, uh, maybe these flowers are not well developed or they, depending upon their position or their uh, uh, existence, these plants are further subclassified. Fine. Anyways, uh, the reproductive parts. The reproductive parts are well developed in these particular plants. That means they are having the well developed male and female reproductive parts. They are, which are able to produce the male and the female gametes. These male and female gametes, they can fuse together uh, and they can form the structure known as zygote which is further going to grow into the embryo. And this embryo further it is going to be enclosed inside the seed. 
so uh, i can say that uh, the seeds are having uh, the embryos are uh, uh, they are enclosed or they are developing inside the seeds further right or the seed is having a hard coat uh, in its surrounding which is enclosing this particular structure which is known as the embryo and embryo it has been resulted from the uh, zygote which is a fused form of male and a female gamete so such type of process the reproductive cycle or a sexual reproduction it takes place in a, a well developed manner in this in these particular plants uh, whereas it is not so uh, exactly in the case of cryptogams over there there is no seeds over there that means the embryos are uh, not enclosed inside any hard structure fine uh, further the seeds uh, <coughs> they may be present as a naked structures or they may be enclosed inside the fruits so depending upon this particular fact the plants are further subclassified so these uh, seed bearing plants if the seeds are naked they are uh, they will belong to the division gymnosperms and if the seeds are enclosed then they are uh, uh, they will belong to the division angiosperms uh, all together in common these particular plants are having some common characteristic features and you know what are those features it is that the plant body is well differentiated that means they are having the well developed root system uh, shoot system uh, or i can say the root stems and leaves are very well developed in these particular organisms uh, besides this the vascular system is also well developed uh, this vascular system that is of course comprised of xylem and the phloem tissue so these are very well developed in the gymnosperms and in the angiosperms further the embryo it always develops from the fertilized egg right so this is of course one of the characteristic feature of the phanerogams well now let me explain you the specific features of the group gymnosperms and the angiosperms so the plants that belong to division gymnosperm uh, they are said to be most primitive you know in terms of what see in the uh, initially when i was discussing about the kingdom plantae i said the thallophyte right the group thallophyta it is comprised of the plants which are most primitive most simplest plants right now here i am repeating the same thing so don't get confused here i am saying these are those primitive or simple plants in which the uh, first time the seed bearing capacity is present they these are the, this is the first group right which is able to produce the seeds further although these seeds they are not uh, enclosed inside any structure like fruit fine rather they are present as a naked structures uh, these plants are generally woody uh, perennial and evergreen uh, you know what is meant by all these things woody of course you must be knowing that they are having the developed bark or stem structure uh, then perennial means they are uh, perennial that means those which can grow for more than a uh, single growth season right and evergreen that means uh, they can grow in any season right that means they are uh, green in all the different seasons fine uh, vascular system as i already said is well developed but here in this case that is in the gymnosperms xylem tissue lacks the vessels and phloem tissue it lacks the companion cells that means the secondary growth is uh, uh, comparatively less in this particular uh, vascular system in the gymnosperms besides this the sporophylls you know what are these sporophylls sporophyll uh, fills they are known as, they are defined as a spore bearing leaves so these spore bearing leaves they aggregate to form the cones uh, and there are separate male and female cones in these particular plants so these are the important basic features of these particular gymnosperms uh, well for example uh, these particular uh, this category includes the plants like cy uh, cycads and the pines and all so one of the picture is shown here that is the pine tree 
right so this pine tree is an example of uh, this particular category besides that the deodorant plants cycas all these belong to uh, such a, a group that is gymnosperms well next division is the uh, angiosperms and these uh, angiosperms are said to be the highly evolved plants which are having the well differentiated body and the well developed vascular system the uh, seeds which are produced in this particular group they are always enclosed within the fruit uh, the seeds definitely they are comprised of the embryos right they are having the embryo inside uh, inside the cover definitely so this embryo which is uh, actually the precursor tissue for the development of the new plant right uh, besides this the important point is that uh, these embryos they are uh, enclosed inside the cover in the seeds definitely right and uh, these covered structures or they are known as the cotyledons there are different types of seeds in which the number of cotyledons actually varies right uh, these cotyledons they can be either single or there can be a there can be two cotyledons right uh, these cotyledons they are also known as the seed leaves you know why this is because these uh, cotyledons they emerge as the green leaves when the seeds are germinated for the first time you must have seen when the seed germinates the two leafy like structures they get opened isn't it so those uh, leafy like structures uh, they are actually nothing but that they are the <coughs> grown uh, and uh, cotyledons they are developing from the cotyledons so these structures are known as the seed leaves right uh, further as i said that uh, angiosperms uh, they are for the i'm sorry the seeds uh, they are having either a single cotyledon or two cotyledons so depending upon this the angiosperms are further subclassified subclassified as what monocot and the dicot so these monocots and the dicots they are uh, actually uh, not only having this important feature but of course this is the base for the subclassification right uh, besides this number of cotyledon these plants are also having some different characteristic features and these uh, features can actually help us to uh, identify the type of plant that means if there are the plants in front of us so by looking at several features we can actually uh, identify or we can actually subclassify them that whether it is a monocot or it is a uh, dicot fine uh, and what is that feature definitely one of this is by looking at the seeds whether it is having a single cotyledon or they are having the two cotyledons so a structure is shown here this first structure which is having a single cotyledon and this second one is having the uh, two cotyledons so it is known as the uh, dicot right <clears throat> besides this <clears throat> the other feature is that uh, the leaves i'm sorry uh, the leaves are having the parallel venation uh, whereas in the case of uh, dicots the leaves are having the reticulate venation uh, you must have seen those fibers present uh, uh, in the leaves right so if they are parallel definitely the type of plant must be monocot whereas if it is uh, reticulate that means it is uh, as a net like it is present in the net form it is forming a network over there then it must be a dicot besides this the uh, in the case of monocots the root system is fibrous that means it is not just a straight um, uh, like a tap root rather there is the fibers in these particular roots whereas dicots they show the tap root system see these points will be more clear uh, when i will show you the next chart here uh, in that the pattern of these particular uh, features will be more clear uh, well you can see this chart here so as i said there is a single cotyledon you can see this structure i have shown you the picture earlier also right uh, regarding veins the pattern is parallel right and uh, uh, you know how this pattern uh, actually uh, parallel it should be uh, stated although it is in the uh, in this way but even i can clarify so that you can understand it well enough uh, see if this is the leaf <coughs> right and this is the midrib so venation is like this these parts are 
parallel to each other like this so you can see these parallel lines right so such type of net uh, parallel venation is observed in the monocots and in the case of dicots uh, veins are usually present as a network so although this network it is showing shown here but uh, it is better to make it like this see i can show you in a single leaf here right if this is a leaf then it is like this the network is observed in this way they are having sub branches right so this is how the uh, these are having this type of network <coughs> in the in the um, in this venation right so this is what uh, we exactly i know the picture is not looking so perfect but definitely i hope you must have understand the concept so they are having a network like uh, leaf uh, venation i'm sorry uh then the uh, vascular bundles in the case of vascular uh, in uh, monocots the vascular bundles are scattered you know what are these vascular bundles the combination or the uh, structures which in which the phloem and uh, uh, xylem tissues are arranged together so these bundles of phloem plus uh, xylem they are known as the vascular bundles in case of monocots they are scattered if you observe the uh, this uh, um, the ts of this stem or these parts then you will observe under the microscope that how these are arranged if they are scattered it should be monocot if it is uh, uh, in a particular uh, uh, ring uh, it is arranged well in a ring then it must be a dicot so definitely for this you will need a microscope then uh, regarding uh, roots i said the fibrous root is present in the case of monocot so uh, i don't think there is a need to explain much about it as the picture is very clear in this diagram right uh, oppositely in the case of uh, dicots the tap root system is present that means a single prominent root is present which is having the branches further but one prominent root is of course present which is absent in the case of monocots then uh, regarding the <coughs> floral parts if you look at the flowers in these plants you will observe that uh, in the case of monocots uh, the petals are present in the multiples of 3 whereas uh, in the case of uh, dicots they are arranged in the multiples of 4 or 5 petals so this is how you can observe the structure of the flowers also so by looking at these features somehow it can help you in observing or in identifying that whether the given plant is monocot or a dicot so this is uh, all about the gymnosperms and the uh, angiosperms according to your syllabus right and uh, also it is all about the kingdom planting right further i will start with the next topic and uh, that is of course i'm going to continue in the next session so till then thank you so much have a nice day goodbye